Hi, I'm Kaylee, and I'm here to tell you about some of my very favorite classic children's literature. If you watch my videos a lot or you follow my blog, then you know I am all about the children's literature, and I especially love classic children's literature. I'm talking from like the mid-1800s up to about the 1950s. There was some wonderful, beautiful children's literature that was written in this period. And that's what I'm going to show you today. I have picked a very select few of my absolute favorites that I want to show you. And I'm not even going to mention some of the more obvious choices, you know, like Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. Obviously, everybody knows about this. Everybody loves this one. What I want to do today is give you some of the lesser known classic children's literature. So I'm not going to mention books like The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, The Wonderful Little House on the Prairie Books, Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery, The Forever Classic Heidi by Johanna Spirey, and other obvious books like Little Women by Ellen Alcott, Everybody's Favorite Charlotte Webb by E.B. White, and also Stuart Little by E.B. White, which is my favorite. Nope, I am not going to mention Rebecca of Sunnybook Farm by Kate Douglas Wiggin. Not going to talk about it. And I'm especially not going to talk about any Edith Nesbitt books like The Railway Children or The Treasure Seekers or The Enchanted Castle or, you know, how did that get in there? <laughs> A Bear Called Paddington. That's Michael Bond. That's not Edith Nesbitt. I will absolutely not talk about Pippi Longstocking by Astrid Lindgren. Nor will I talk about The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. If you expected me to mention Peter Pan and Kensington Gardens, then you are much mistaken, my friend. Or if you wanted to hear about Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham, sorry, it's not in this video. At the Back of North Wind by George MacDonald. Hans Brinker or The Silver Skates by Mary Mapes Dodge. The Beautiful Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. Pollyanna by Eleanor H. Porter. The Borrowers by Mary Norton. The Rescuers by Marjorie Sharp, which is actually a very long series, by the way. And of course, the myriad of Dr. Doolittle books by Hugh Lofting. Nope, I'm not talking about any of those, and I am not talking about Noel Stretfield's Shoe series with ballet shoes and dancing shoes and theater shoes and tennis shoes and skating shoes. Not talking about the shoe books. Sorry. I mean, if you wanted to hear about those books, too bad. Those books are just too well known. The books I really want to talk about today are some that are slightly lesser well known. Some of them are even out of print, but I've managed to get my greedy fingers on them. These are in no particular order. These are just some beautiful classic children's literature that I've read over the years. The first one I really want to talk about is Granny's Wonderful Chair by Frances Brown. This is a tiny short little book and it is told in classic fairy tale style. Snowflower's grandmother goes away on a trip and leaves her magical chair as company for her granddaughter. The chair transports her to wherever she wants to go and she ends up in the court of the king and the king is bored and he asks for a story. And so the chair, magically, a voice comes out of the chair and tells a story every night of the festival. This is a beautiful fairy tale and I have loved reading it over and over. Next, I have every book ever written by Edward Eager. These beautiful children's books came out in the 50s. We have Magic or Not, The Knight's Castle, Magic by the Lake, Seven Day Magic, Half Magic, and The Well-Wishers. Edward Eager tells these beautiful fairy tale magical stories that are kind of a cross between Roald Dahl and C.S. Lewis. And if you can think of kind of the silliness and fun of Roald Dahl in this wonderful fairy tale fantasy setting like you have in Narnia, that's Edward Eager. What Katie Did, What Katie Did Next, and What Katie Did at School by Susan Coolidge. These beautiful books are about the lovely young Katie who is growing up in the turn of the century. She is the oldest in a big family of kids. And it's all about her and her sisters and brothers growing up and dealing with the world around them. This one kind of reminds me of Little Women a little bit in its tone. It's all about family life. I'd say this one is kind of a cross between the fun and adventure of Anne of Green Gables, but with kind of a Little Women style. Speaking of Ellen Alcott, everybody knows Little Women, but a lot of people don't know she wrote a ton of other books. And one of my favorites is Jack and Jill. This is the story of two friends, Jack and Jill. They are neighbors growing up as kids together. But when Jill gets into an accident, she is paralyzed from the waist down 
And it's all about how their friendship develops and how Jack really comes through for her and supports her through her illness. But despite her illness, there is fun and games and silliness. I mean, it's just little women, but like better. <laughs> A lot of people know that T.H. White wrote The Once and Future King, but not many people know he wrote for children Mistress Masham's Repose. Mistress Masham's Repose is actually the name of a temple that is on this old rundown estate. And 10 year old Maria is an orphan and she goes out exploring. She finds this rundown, just this ruin of a temple. And she finds that there are tiny people who live there. They are the descendants of Lilliputians who were kidnapped by Gulliver in the olden times and brought back to England. <laughs> and so, of course, this delightful story is all about her dealing with her discovery of the Lilliputians and trying to save them from being discovered by evil people. This is a delightful story with a miniature sea battle and a horrible old dungeon. A headlong cross-country chase. Every situation gets more crazy as the book goes along. This story has humor and satire and a little bit of worldly wisdom too. A lot of people know Edith Nesbitt's The Railway Children, but most people don't know Five Children in It or The Phoenix in the Carpet. These two books are about the same set of characters, siblings who encounter a magical object. In Five Children in It, they find a Samiad, which is a sand fairy that grants them wishes. And in The Phoenix in the Carpet, they of course have a magical carpet, like you know, from Aladdin. And they have a phoenix who's trying to tell them magic has consequences. This is classic children's literature at its very, very best. I have reread these so many times and enjoyed them. I've enjoyed every minute of them. Most people know Frances Hodgson Burnett for The Secret Garden and A Little Princess and even Little Lord Fauntleroy, but one of her lesser known books is The Lost Prince. I don't have a copy of it here, but I have read it on an ebook. The Lost Prince is all about this young poor boy and he befriends a homeless child. The poor boy's father, he gives his boy a, a task. Father has set them figure out who this Lost Prince is. It's kind of a mystery that the two of them have to figure out together. In my opinion, it's one of the very best things that Frances Hodgson Burnett ever wrote and it deserves way more readers. The Voyage of Barracks by Stuart Petrie is one of my very favorite children's books. It's about a family that gets sick of living where they are. They want a peaceful country life. And so they decide to make their house into a balloon and they go all around the world having adventures and trying to find just a peaceful place to live their lives. This is possibly one of the best, most just most beautifully crafted children's books that I think I've ever read. If I had to pick a number one, this might be it. <laughs> the absolute number one book in this video that I want you to take away with you is Knock Three Times by Marion St. John Webb. This is the story of Molly and her twin brother Jack. When it's Molly's birthday, her aunt gives her a pincushion that is shaped like a pumpkin. Ugh, not a good birthday gift. But when the full moon shines on it, that pumpkin grows huge and it goes rolling off It's a magic pumpkin. They follow the pumpkin into a magical land and then they have to fight the evil wizard. And the way to get into that magical land is of course to knock three times. I know it sounds very cliche, a magical pumpkin and an evil wizard, but I'm telling you, this is absolutely unique. In the world of classic children's literature, I have never seen anything like this. The adventure is absolutely thrilling. If you take anything away from this video and you're like, aha, there's one book from this video that you want to read, make it this one, you guys. Make it this one. Okay, those are all of the classic children's literature books that I have to show you today. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what are some of your favorite classic children's books or even just any children's book, or what's a book that you think should be a modern classic. I'm trying to give a booktuber shout out in every video that I do. And for this video, my shout out is to Rachel Hobson. She makes these incredibly thoughtful videos. She has such an intelligent way of describing the books that she reads and why she likes it or why she doesn't like it. Please check out her channel. Go and subscribe right now. Thanks for watching and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.